What up? You guys good? Yeah? Awesome. I feel good. Hey, if you got your Bibles, turn with me. We're in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, as Pastor Anthony was just saying, um, we're in chapter 10. And uh, what we've been doing is we're going through this book. We're going through a book of the Bible. We're going chapter by chapter and verse uh, by verse. How many of you guys just love your Bibles? Yeah, don't worry if you don't, you will. You'll fall in love with the Word of God. It's just something crazy that the Holy Spirit does. We are into the Word here. We believe in the Bible. We believe that the Bible is the infallible, uh, God-inspired Word and that it is relevant and prophetic. It's so crazy how each week the, the Lord uses um, the Scriptures to kind of open up stuff within our own hearts and even stuff that's happening within the culture. And, and it's pretty, pretty wild. It's funny, there was a guy... Um, uh, he met me at the door. He's new here to SRC, him and his wife. And he said to me, he was like, he was like, wow. He goes, my wife uh, said we need to go to Seattle Revival Center. And he said, I was a little worried because with a name like Seattle Revival Center, I was like, I don't know. It sounds like one of them churches. <laughs> How many of you have ever been to one of them churches? <laughs> he was like, you guys, actually, you're not weird. And he's like, it was so good. You, you, you read the Bible. You studied the Word of I thought you guys were going to be weird. And I was like, hey, listen, don't let today fool you. We are a church of weirdos. I was like, we are totally into the weirdo stuff. We are. And I mean, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I, I said, um, we believe in the Spirit and the word we believe in the rhema and the logos yeah we believe in the written word and we believe in the god breathe revealed word yeah yep 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 we sure do yeah 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 hey 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 and how about the spirit of the lord in the place tonight <laughs> man worship team took us deep yeah, it was like over our head tonight. It took us to the deep end of the pool. You know, uh, Carly, she was leading worship here. Uh, and, you know, here's something that you might not know about Carly. The very first conference that we ever hosted with me as the pastor, it was called Eyes That See, Ears That Hear. We had Jonathan Welton and Bobby Connor. Very first conference that we ever hosted. And Carly led worship at that conference. Yeah, she was from a church called Jake's House. And I was like, I've heard of that church. I've heard good things about that church. And I had no idea um, just the partnership between Seattle Revival Center and Jake's house and what that was going to come into. And we so love Carly. We so love Jake's house. She was leading worship over at, speaking of weird churches, she was over at this church called The Pursuit this morning leading worship. Have you guys heard about them? Oh, man, you got to keep them in your prayers, you know. My goodness, God's doing some, some things through them. Russell Johnson, he's speaking of weirdos. My goodness. Well, let's do this. We're going to, let's pray, and then let's dive into the word. Father, we thank you so much for what you've done throughout this entire day. You showed up at the 9, you showed up at the 11, you showed up this afternoon. <laughs> You're the God that when we invite you, you show up. And so, Holy Spirit, we just invite you. We just say, come and have your way. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Angels of God, we honor you. You are heavenly servants of the Lord Most High. Great cloud of witnesses, we honor you. We honor the generations that have run before us. Those who have sown and watered and plowed and have been interceding for such a time, for such a generation as this who have been interceding even for this season of harvest time in Seattle. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your dreams that you have for us. We thank you for your God dream. We thank you that we are a manifestation of a God dream. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have new things, things that our eyes haven't seen, Things that our ears haven't heard, things that our imagination don't really 
have the capability of even creating in and of themselves. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are revealing revelatory present day ministries, uh, men, uh, yeah, 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 uh, ministry realities to those who love you. We declare, we love you. We declare, Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Father God, we love you. And we honor you. And we thank you for this time tonight. We ask that it be holy and sacred, set apart unto yourself. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen, 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 amen. Yeah, God is here, God is here, God is here. Hallelujah. All right, I want to I pray for, you, for, for you, bro. Um, uh, Elvin. And I know, I know a little bit about you, but would, would you just stand real quick? I'm just going to jump down here. Oh, yeah. yeah, actually, come on up here. I know, I know a little bit about you, but um, uh, uh, I'm not going to pray what I know. I'm just going to pray what I see Father doing in you. Is that good? Sure. Come on. Awesome. Would you guys just stretch out your hands? Father, we just thank you, Father, for this son. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for the call of God on his life. Yes. And we just affirm him. As a son, yeah. as a son of righteousness, as a son of holiness, even as you have this golden crown that appears to be worn by a pug. Yes. <laughs> I see gold not only on your chest, but I see gold in you. Yes. And I just see that there's, there's, there, that there's a fire in your heart, and it's like things get thrown into the fire, but, but I just see that only the gold has remained. Yeah, and, and I also just, I, I, I smell a fragrance coming off of your life, and it's a fragrance that's coming from your heart, and the Lord says that he smells your worship, he smells that your, your, your praise has caught his attention, I, I, and there's a sound, there's a frequency coming off of you, and, and, and brother, I don't know if you know this, but gold has a sound, gold has a frequency, and I just, and I see, a, I hear a sound of gold. I hear a sound that's pure. I hear a sound that's the result of something that's been purified by fire. Yes. And now I bless you, Father. I bless, I bless Elvin right now, Lord. I just pray that the fire of God will come on him now. I pray for a fresh touch. Lord, I know there's a fire in him, but Lord, I invite your fire to come upon him right now. Yes. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray, Lord, that there'd be a fresh release. It's almost like been, the, the, there's almost been like, um, uh, almost like a, a, a something kind of holding you back a little bit maybe and it's like you've been ready to run ready to run ready to run but it's almost like it's almost like 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 the Lord's like not yet you know not yet it's not like the enemy's holding you back but it's just like there's been like a, a restraint you know and I and, and what I see is I see the father going to the front line it's almost like with all these other runners about to run a race I see I see the father with his with his gun and I and I see him just pulling the trigger and when I hear the Lord says you will run and not grow weary you will walk and not faint yeah, and Lord, I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, uh, supernatural endurance that's on yes. his life. And, and brother, you're supposed to sing, sing, sing. I'm telling yes. you, there's a sound and a song and a frequency that's about to get released through your life. And I honor that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, bud. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thanks for coming out, man. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And it's been a while. Come on. How's everyone else doing? You doing good? Yeah, what's your name? You're a visitor. You got the visitor bag. Am I not allowed to pick on her? No, you're not. No. God loves you so much. I'm so glad that you're here tonight. Can I pray for you, Debbie? All right. She said that. I know, I'm putting you on the spot. You're, you're fine? Okay. Well, God's really going to bless you. He loves you so much. You know, the problem is you sat on the front row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you sat on the front row. But God loves you so much. He's got a beautiful plan for your life. Yeah, and, and Christmas is going to come early this year. And you're going to, there's some things that you've been asking the Lord for. And he's going to give you um, uh, 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 the, the, some of the dreams and desires of your heart. And, uh, and I actually see um, hope. Um, you, you're going to open up a, 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 a present and there's going to be hope inside the present. And the Lord says he's going to, because um, you, you ha you've had it, and then something kind of tried to take it from you. And the Lord says he's going to give you your hope back. 
and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be awesome. There's just like a beautiful restoration of joy that's coming, and it's going to be so, so good. God is so pleased with you. I'm so proud of you. I know, the front row, whatever. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be, but God loves you so much. I don't even know you. I love you. I think you're pretty awesome, and God's going to do something beautiful in your life, okay? Is that good? All right, awesome. God bless you. Thanks for coming out. All right, good, 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 good. Yeah, glory to God. Hey, hey, Joanne. Hey, guys, guess what? Joanne has led three people to the Lord in the last two weeks. High five. Come on. Yeah. How's it going, brother? Have we met before? No. No. Can I pray for you? Sure. All right. You're not sitting in the front row. I came to the back row. Why don't you stand up? What's your name? Uh, Joe. Joe, that's a good name. Guys, stretch out your hands. We're just going to bless this guy. Father, we just thank you so much for Joe. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that of all these people, Lord, your eyes have been searching throughout this room, Lord, and Lord, you highlighted Joe. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence and your power and your glory. We just invite you just to come and just to manifest yourself right now. Come, Holy Spirit. (laughs) Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Hey, God. Lord, I just thank you. Joe, I just see the faithfulness of God over you. I see like the banner of his faithfulness over you. I see it over you and your family. I just see the faithfulness of God. Yeah, and, uh, and, and you, you've seen some things, you, you know, whatever else. But I just see that, that you have been faithful, that you have sought after the Lord. And, um, and yeah, 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 yeah. Put out your hands, buddy. I, I see a healing anointing coming on you. Yeah. Had, 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 it might have been there already. Yeah, it might have already been there. So you heal the sick? Is that something that you do? You've had a little experience. Yeah, yeah you're, going next, you're going next level. Father, I thank you for these hands. Lord, I think that they are locked and loaded for such a time as this. This isn't a new word. This is an old word. Lord, you're doing something. And now, Lord, I just declare upgrade right now. Upgrade. Next level. Next level. Next level. Next level. I see like a partnering with the angelic realm. Father, I thank you for Joe. I thank you for his authority. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that he doesn't get pushed around by darkness. He pushes around darkness. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you've called him even for such your time is it he's seen some cool things but joe you haven't seen nothing yet you haven't seen nothing yet you haven't seen nothing yet and lord i and i even see i see a special miracle i see blind eyes opening it have you have you seen that uh, no. no all right it's coming i see blind eyes opening so lord use these hands to open up blind eyes father to open up blind eyes lord and I see, I see even an upgrade in just courage and boldness. I see you just coming into some places, Joe. I see you just coming in, just like just the, just the, you know, the righteous are bold as lions. They're, you know that, don't you? The righteous are as bold as lions. And I just see that all the over you. Come on, God. come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll pray that, Father. I just thank you, God, for that. For the boldness of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Lord, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you brought him tonight. He didn't bring himself tonight. You brought him tonight. And, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You're taking him up. You're leveling him up. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How's it going? Have we met before? We haven't met. Have you been here before? Even in the back row. Who, this guy who picks some people in the front row and even in the back row. Can I pray for you too? I think that would be great. God loves you so much. Why don't you just stand up? Hey, why don't you guys just go ahead and stretch out your hands? Man, Jesus is here tonight. You believe that? Yeah. Jesus is here tonight. Wow, Jesus is here. God loves you so much. Yes, he does. He loves you so much. That all these people, he highlighted you. Isn't that awesome? He loves you so much. Father, I just thank you for your presence. Jesus, would you just come right now? Jesus, would you come and do what only you can do? Would you just come... I just see Jesus coming right, right, right up. Just go ahead and close your eyes. Jesus, would you come face to face right now, face to face with my sister right now, face to face. Jesus, would you come? Just forget about all these people. They're not even here. It's just you and Jesus. Forget about They'll be all right. They'll wait. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. 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 We invite your light. We invite your life. And we invite your glory, Lord. Fresh touch tonight in Jesus' name. Yep, let your love come right now. Let your peace come right now, Lord. Yep, rapture her up, God. Take her up tonight, God. Take her up tonight, Lord. Lord, take her up tonight. I see the Lord actually lifting you up. 
up and out of the cloud on, on the earth. It's like there's like a cloud on the earth, a lot of stuff, like that, that, that. And I just see the Lord just picking you up right out of the cloud, the turmoil, whatever else. I also see healing coming for your body tonight. Does that, do you need that? Yeah, what's going on? I'm, I'm going to have surgery on both my feet and then my stomach too. On your stomach and your feet? Yep. Okay, awesome. Go ahead and just hold up your hands. Come, Jesus, come right now, come right now. Church, just begin to pray. Oh, Lord, Shadakiriana, healing right now, healing right now, healing right now, healing right now. Spirit of infirmity, you are not our friend, you are not of the Holy Spirit. You're not of the Holy Spirit. You've been trying to steal from my sister. Yep, yep, you've been trying to hold her back. You're a generational spirit. Yep, 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 just, just speak this out to me. Infirmity, speak it out, it's infirmity. You're not my friend. You're not, for me. You're not for me. And so I renounce you right now. I renounce you right now. All right, infirmity, you heard the lady. Out and up right now to the pit right now in Jesus' name. Infirmity, let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Out from her belly right now. Out from her belly right now. Go right now. Go right. Yep, yep, that's Jesus. I said go right now. Go. Let her go. I said let her go right now. Let her go right now. Let her go right now. Fire on you, infirmity. Fire on you, infirmity. Fire on you. Yeah, you feel that? Yeah, that's Jesus, okay? All right, I say more, Lord, right now. Fire right now. Fire right now, God. Fire right now. Healing right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I loose your healing touch, God. I loose your healing touch, Lord. I speak healing to both your feet. I speak healing to your knees. I speak healing to your stomach. Yeah, I speak, yep, 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 yep. What do you feel? What do you feel in your body? My body's just like, I'm lightheaded. I'm like lightheaded. You're lightheaded. Are you feel heat in your body right now? Yeah, my stomach and up. <laughs> Jeanette, come here. Yeah, Jeanette, come put your hand on her stomach, okay? Church, I want you to pray in the spirit. The Lord's going to touch this woman right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we loose your healing touch right now. Loose your healing touch right now. I speak a restoration. Yep, 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 yep. To, it's a damage that's been done to the body. There's been damage and things that have been torn, and like different things have been torn with your stomach lining. I speak to your, your gut right now. I speak gut health right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we loose your healing touch right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Satan, let her go right now. Let her go. Let her go. I said, let her go right now. I said, let her go right now. I said, right now. Not tomorrow, not next year. I said, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. You, Jesus, you died on the cross for her. You bled for her. You died for her because she's your daughter and you love her. We thank you, Lord. 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 We thank you, Jesus. She came tonight because you summoned her tonight, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. All the way, 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 all the way. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, God. All the way, all the way, all the way. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jeanette. If you want to keep praying for her, that would be awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll pray for you too. What's your name? Pauline. Pauline. God loves you so much. Yep, 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 yep. I see the Lord coming. I see the Lord coming to you like out, out in the forest. And it's almost like, um, it's almost like, you know, when you're a child and you get too far away from home and then all of a sudden you kind of get lost and you can't find your way back. And it's not, it's not like a child's fault. It's like you just went kind of too far out. And now, and now you just need some help, you know, kind of finding your way, finding your way back. And I just see Jesus coming to you in the forest. And he says, hey, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to punish you. I'm not, you, just, you just got kind of far out. And Jesus says, hey, I'm coming, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back home. And, uh, and, and as you come back, um, you're going to come back to a home that you've never experienced before. And there's a, there's, a, there's a beautiful, like, Thanksgiving table, you know, with all, with all the food, and, and, it's, and it's ready to go. And at the table, there's a seat just for you, Pauline. It's got your name on it. And as you sit down and as you look up, you'll see a banner flying above you, and it says, love. And so the Lord is bringing you back. He's sitting you down. He's going to feed you. He's going to take care of you. And you never have to leave. You never have to leave. Yeah, and that right there was freedom. That was freedom. That sound that came out right now, that was freedom. Isn't that good? You're feeling better? Yeah, isn't that good? That's Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus tonight. Hey, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. 
right? Come on. Today was a big Sunday. We celebrated. We had balloons and stuff. Why? Because today was the first no waiver Sunday. All right, 1 Corinthians 10. Today we're going to be talking about the dangers of religion. So you came to church so I could warn you about religion. Aren't you excited? <laughs> you think that church would be the last place that you go to hear about the dangers of religion, right? This is going to be good. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud. Okay, we're not talking about natural clouds, okay? We're talking about the glory cloud. I remember being a, a child and, and going into church services where there was an actual literal cloud in the room. It was, it was the glory cloud of God, and I could actually run my fingers through the cloud. Now, the Israelites, when they were let out of Egypt, backstory. How many of you guys have ever seen like Charl Charlton Heston, Ten Commandments, right? You know, he goes to Pharaoh and he says, let's say it together, let my people go, right? Eventually Pharaoh let him go, right? And now they're in the wilderness and they're not alone. No, the glory, the literal glory cloud of God was with them. That's what it's talking about here. Keep reading. And they passed through the sea. That's where, again, Charlton Heston, um, uh, you know, does his thing. And the Red Sea opens up wide. And the people of God walk through the sea. Okay? Not sure how many of you guys have parted any waters. Anyone walked through Lake Washington recently, right, on dry ground? No? All right, we'll get there. Don't worry. That'll be good. That'll make it on the front page. All right. He's like, let me remind you that our forefathers, those that went before us, they walked in this supernatural reality out of Egypt and into this place of being sustained by God. Glory cloud walking through the Red Sea. Yeah? Look at, and they were baptized into Moses in the glory cloud and in the sea. Verse 3. And they all ate the same spiritual Food. What's he talking about? If you remember, um, the Israelites are out in the wilderness and they started to grumble and complain. Why? Because um, their tum tums were hungry, their stomachs were growling. They're starting to grumble and complain. They wanted to go back to Egypt. Why? Because they remembered the pleasure of the past. How many of you have ever had the pleasure of the past? trying to remind you of some of the good aspects so that you'd go back. No one? Okay, that's cool. Okay, one. One of you. Awesome. All right. They're like, the Israelites were like, in Egypt, we had meat pots. Mm. They had meat pots. And they wanted to go back. And guess what the Lord did for them? The next day when they came out of their tents, it was like it had snowed. And there was white stuff all over the ground. The ground was covered in manna. What's manna? Good question. Thanks for asking. All right. Manna is divine, directly from heaven, supernatural donuts. <laughs> this is fresh, baked, heavenly bread on the earth, and they ate something physical that came from heaven. Okay, he's like, hey, let me remind you, let me remind you about grandma and grandpa. Let me remind you about our forefathers. The glory cloud, okay, supernatural bread, walking through the Red Sea, okay? Verse 4, and they drank spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that what? Followed them, and the rock was Christ. They ate spiritual food and they drank spiritual drink from the rolling stone that followed them. That's crazy. That's crazy. We know that um, Jewish tradition would tell us that when Moses struck the rock, okay, that Jewish tradition says that actually blood flowed out of the rock and then water followed pointing as a prophetic picture of Christ hanging on the cross they pierce his side and from his side flows 
blood and water that even in the days of Moses is a prophetic picture of the true rock, the living rock, the true and perfect Moses who would come not to deliver people from Egypt but to deliver modern day humanity from the effects of sin, sickness, disease, and death. He would live, die, go into Hades, overcome the enemy, overcome sin, sickness, disease, and death, and then come back on the third day. The, the, the tombstone would be rolled away. He would come out. He would say, I'm alive. And they'd be like, oh my gosh. Yep, 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 yep. He'd hang out for 40 days. Look at me. This is the real me. This is pretty crazy. And then he ascends in front of all of them where he is seated at the right hand of the Father where he makes intercession for us. This is what Paul's saying to the believers in Corinth. Guys, I need to remind you of our history, of our supernatural legacy. He says that the, the, our family, they lived under the cloud. They walked through the sea. They, 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 they drank the spiritual um, water from the rolling stone. And they had supernatural donuts. Praise the Lord. And then verse 5. Nevertheless. It's never good when you hear nevertheless. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as an example for us that we may not desire evil as they did. This is what I did. Since we're talking about the dangers of religion, I've come up with some commandments tonight. Some thou shalt nots. Is that good? All right. So the very first thou shalt not that I have for us tonight is, and you'll love it. I'm, I trust that you'll love it. Thou shalt not take the God vaccine. Now, this has nothing to do with the COVID vaccine. So you can just take a big, deep breath. I'm not going to go off on a COVID rant, okay? Like, the vaccine, all right, that's between you and your spouse and the Holy Spirit, okay? So you pray and you obey, all right? You'll, you'll notice I didn't include your doctor, okay? That's between you and your spouse and Holy Spirit. You pray and obey. Good times. All right. What's the vaccine? Good question. You guys are asking such good questions tonight. All right. Okay. A vaccine is when they take a little bit of something and they put it in you so that the real thing can't affect you. This is what Paul says. He says, our forefathers, like, like they walked in a supernatural reality, and yet it was just enough of God to inoculate them so that they wouldn't receive all of him. And this is what Paul says. He says, just because you're there, just because you've experienced something, just because you've seen something, just because you have a revelation of something, doesn't mean that you know him. It's the picture of the prodigal son. There was actually two sons. There was a, a younger son and an older son. And it was a picture of the younger son that says, I don't love you. I just love your stuff. So give me my inheritance and give it to me now. I know I'm supposed to wait until you're dead, but I want your stuff. It's going to be mine someday. I want it, and I want it now. And what does the father do? He would have sold off some of his land, and he would have given his son his inheritance. And then he goes off, and he squanders it. He acts a fool, and he comes back. Daddy, I'm so sorry. Okay? But there's a second son, and he's the older son, and he's the good son. He is the religious son. So you've got the anti-religious son, the, I do what I want. I do what I want. Give me my money. Give me my inheritance. And give it to me now. I write it now. And then you've got the older son. I'm so glad that I'm nothing like that fool. I'm nothing like Papa. I'm your good son. Aren't you proud of me? Aren't you glad that I'm nothing like that foolish fool that you used to call a son? Yeah. The son comes back, the younger one. The older one throws a fit. He won't even go to the party, to the party, to the young son come home party. He wouldn't even go to that. Why? Because he says to his dad, I have been a good son. 
I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never dropped the F-bomb in your presence. I have always done right. I voted for Trump because of you. And you can't even give me a coat? Two sons, okay? Radically opposite. Neither of them love the father's heart. They love the father's stuff. And this is what we see here. We're talking about, again, the dangers of religion. This place where we worship God, we serve God, we try to do right, we come to, this, we come to church, you know, and, and, and we, do all of, we do all of this stuff, right? And, um, and we, do, we do just enough, okay? And we've got, got to go to church once a week, right? Nothing wrong with going to church, okay? No, nothing wrong with it. And, and we read our Bible and we do all these things. And what are we doing? We're getting just enough Jesus on Sunday to inoculate us from beholding him in his fullness on Monday. We have just enough God, just enough of his presence. And this is what Paul says. A generation walked in the manifest presence of God. They were fed by God. He gave them drink and water. He delivered them constantly. And yet they didn't know him. And they didn't love him. And this is what Paul says. Paul says that God put up with them. We cannot be that kind of generation that just seeks after spiritual realities because they're mystical or they're a little woo-woo. The question is, is, do you want him? Do you want him for him? And this is the danger of religion. Religion will give you a checklist. How many of you, like when you join a religion, as if we join religions all the time, you know, the very first question that you ask is, all right, what do I got to do to belong? What do I got to do to be accepted? And every religion will give you a list. Here's what you do. Here's what you wear. Here's what you say. Here's what you don't do. Here's what you don't say. Ch check off everything on this list. Listen, Christianity is the only faith that says, nope, wrong question. It's not what you can do. It's what already has been done. That Buddha, before he died, he said, strive without ceasing. Jesus, before he died, said, it is finished. I've done it all. I have done it all. There's nothing you can do to try to impress me. I'm already impressed by you. Before you've changed anything, before you've done anything different, I love you. I love you, and this is what God said over the earth, the, the entire earth, the earth in her brokenness and in her depravity, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Thou shalt not take the God vaccine. Just have just enough, just a little bit to inoculate us from being possessed and receiving all of him. And for this reason, Seattle Revival Center cannot fix you. Pastor Darren cannot save you. Maybe tonight's going to be a fun night. Hey, that's awesome. I'm more concerned about tomorrow. I'm more concerned about Tuesday when Pastor Darren's not going to be with you. Yeah, you don't need Pastor Darren. You don't need Seattle Revival Center. You don't need our app. What do you need? You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need to know him. You need him inside of you. You need his fire, his passion, his faith. Not your faith in him. His faith in you. Because I'm telling you, church, where we're going, okay, religion will not cut it. Where we are going, hey, I'm going to say it like this. It's not where we're going. It's where we're stinking at. Religion will not sustain you. You'll be gnawing away at that rock. Trying to get virtue out of a rock. Because that's what religion says. Religion gives you a rock and says, this will nourish you. No, 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 no. Christ Jesus will nourish you. He is the bread of life. Yes. Verse 7. Keep reading. This is what it says. Um, Do not be idolaters. So he goes deeper. Okay? We're going to go deeper. You ready to go deeper tonight? 
Are you going to the deeper things? All right. This is what he says. Don't be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and then drink and rose up to play. Verse 8. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. 23,000 fell in a single day. Okay, that's not good. Verse 9. We must put Christ, we must not put, not is a big word there. We must not put Christ to the test, again, as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. Okay. And now some of you are looking at this and saying, okay, um, don't be idolaters. Don't worship other gods. Okay, check. Good. We got that. Awesome. Okay. Don't indulge in sexual immorality. Okay. I, I don't do that anymore. That was last week. Okay, we're good. <laughs> got, we got that one down. And don't grumble. What? He put don't grumble in the same list as, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? What's the problem with grumbling? Grumbling and complaining is the enemy of thanksgiving. And what it is, is how many of you know that what's in your heart comes out of your mouth? That when we grumble and complain, it is like counterfeit praise, and it is declaring where we're actually putting our trust and our confidence. That when we grumble and complain, what we're saying is, God, what you've blessed me with, it's not enough. Grumbling and complaining kept the Israelites out of the land of promise. It kept the Israelites out of, out of the presence. Yeah. So if you're here tonight, okay, yep, and you're worshiping other gods, other idols, yeah, it's a good time to lay them down. Sexual immorality, it's a good time to say, hey, let's, let's, let's do it God's way. It's, it's trust me, it's, it's better, yeah? When it comes to grumbling, okay, I'm done with that. As of when? As of 727 on March 21st. Look at the person next to you and say, hey, I don't grumble anymore. It's like Patricia King. I remember she told Anthony and I, hey, I don't get jet lag anymore. Right? Since when? She's like, since now. I just determined I don't get jet lag anymore. Hey, I don't grumble anymore. Since when? Since just now. I just repented. I just turned away from that, and I'm turning into Christ. Now check it out. Okay? Paul's saying, hey, you can have all this ex- religious stuff, right? All these crazy supernatural experiences, okay? On, on, and, and, and all these things that are affecting you on the outside. And yet what nobody knows is what's going on on the inside. And Paul says, we need to talk about what's going on in the inside. Now look at what he says, verse, verse uh, 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. So listen, if you got a snake all up in your garden tonight, <laughs> jungle book, right? You know? His eyes are like, wah, wah, wah. If you got a snake in your garden, if you got temptation, guess what? Join the club. Yep. He came after Adam and Eve. They failed. He came after Jesus, and he succeeded. Jesus beat the snake. Isn't that awesome? He came after Jesus. He came after you. Jesus succeeded in the temptation so that when we fail in the temptation, we can take on his success story. That's not fair, but that's the good news of the gospel. We get to take on the report card of Jesus. Now, so listen, temptation, we need to talk about it. Paul's saying, hey, church, Corinth, we, we got to talk about this. Temptation, it's common. You think, this is what the enemy says. He says, it's just you. Listen, it's not just you. If you're watching online, you got some stuff going on. You're thinking about doing some things. It's not just you. It's not common to you. Yep. Different generation, different time, different person, same plot line. Same plot line. Welcome back to the garden. And the enemy comes and says, did God really say you can't trust him anyway? You can't trust him anyway. Did God really say? And this is what Paul says. God is faithful. Where is that at? Verse 13. Check it out. God is faithful faithful. Would you read it with me? I'm feeling lonely. God is Do it again. God is One more time. God is 
faithful. When you're being tempted, when you've screwed up or you're about to screw something up, you need to declare this. But God is faithful. And he says, he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Here's the second commandment, okay? Here's the second thou shalt not. Here we go. Thou shalt find your exit. Uh, Pastor Darren, what are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm going to bring back to your recollection a Christian movie that came out a few years ago called The Matrix. In the movie, you got these Christian characters, like people like Trinity, people, you know, uh, like, like they, they were on a spaceship called like the Nebuchadnezzar. Of course it's a Christian movie. Come on. Now they're on this. Now when you've got Neo and you've got Trinity and they get themselves into a jam, right? And they, they, have, they, they, are, they, they are in some drama and the stuff is it in the fan. Here's what they would do. They would find a telephone booth, okay? They'd pick up the phone. They'd call Morpheus because Morpheus lived in reality, he, he lived above that matrix time and space. They'd pick up the phone. The phone, you guys, it would turn into a portal. Okay? What would they say? Morpheus, get us an exit. The phone, you guys, would turn into a portal and it would suck them up through the phone, take them out of the matrix and get them back to reality. This is exactly what Paul is saying. He says, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. He will always provide a phone booth. That's what he says. He will always provide a phone booth. You see, before you had Jesus, before you had the Holy Spirit, you didn't have Morpheus. You didn't have a phone booth. But when you give your life to Jesus... You get amazing grace. You get amazing grace. You see, a lot of people think that amazing grace is that saved a wretch like me. You think that grace is God having to save a wretch like you. How many, you, you we think that grace is that thing where God has to put up with us because of what is son did. Like, God, you, I'm a screw-up, I'm a failure, I messed up yesterday, I'm probably going to mess up tonight, and I'm definitely going to mess up tomorrow. But you got to deal with it. Why? Because of amazing grace. Listen, grace is not the substance that makes God have to deal with your sinfulness and your carnality. No, the fact that you can get forgiven is not grace. What's that? That's mercy. And it's mercy. I almost feel like I've been preaching this entire message with a country western accent. I might need deliverance. I, it's like a Garth Brooks thing on me. To, and I, and I, and I like the whole, all right, so I renounce that Garth Brooks spirit right now. I come up and out to the pit. To the pit, Garth. Listen. Mercy is God's forgiveness. What's grace? Grace is the phone booth. Grace is the escape. Grace is God saying, you no longer have to sin. You used to be a sinner, and what do sinners do? Well, hey, if you're an athlete, what do athletes do? They train. They run. They live life a certain way. When you're a sinner, what do sinners do? They sin. Guys, we've got to stop saying, I'm just a sinner. No, you're not. That's who you used to be. He dead. Rest in peace. Poor little out for my homie. Buried six feet under. Okay? And then guess what else? You died with Christ. You were resurrected with Christ. You've ascended with Christ. You were seated with Christ. And you will be glorified with Christ. You're no longer a sinner, son. You are a righteous, holy son. Come on. That's who you are. So what does grace do? Grace gives you an exit. 
Find your exit. And this is what Paul says. You no longer, hey, believers, things can be different. Let's use the previous generations to learn. So many times people say to me, yeah, Pastor Darren, I made, I made, a, I made a lot of mistakes, you know, but I'm not going to make that same mistake again, right? I've learned from my mistakes, you know. The problem is you've got 10 DUIs. So you're not learning from your mistakes. Yeah, now you can't even go to Canada. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that's all good. Here's, here, here's the deal. Just because you lived it didn't mean you learned from it. You need grace. You need a stinking phone booth. What does that look like? It looks like that when the enemy comes, you pray. Why? Prayer is the phone booth. You get into your closet, you get into your phone booth, you close the door, and you say, Father, I need an exit. And what happens? Jesus comes. He is the living portal. He is the access point into heaven. He is the access point into the kingdom realm. And all of a sudden, you close your eyes. The earth disappears. The world of your Father appears. Heaven appears. The great cloud of witnesses appears. The angels of God appears. And they bad. They got weapons. They got all kinds of things. Even when you think you're the most alone, honey, you are not alone you are never alone why your God is with you his rod and his staff they comfort you he has prepared for you a table in the presence of your enemies you aren't alone he is with you he is for you you do not have to sin there is always an exit you just got to call Morpheus you just got to call Papa and he'll get you out of the matrix and pull you into reality, which is your father's world. Don't get caught up with this time and space. Don't get caught up with this, with this whole earthly thing. It's pretty cool, don't get me wrong. But it is all training for reigning. You're in boot camp. And what you do matters. And what you say matters. And how you live matters. But even if you screw up, I got good news. The Lord will use your screw ups. He will show up. He will redeem you. He will restore you, and he will set you up. All of this is training for that which is to come, and there is a lot to come. When you die, it's not over. When you die, that's when it really begins. Yeah. Let's keep reading. Verse 14. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless... Is, not part, is it not participation in the blood of Christ? He's now talking about communion, okay? The breaking of bread, the participating of, of the wine, which is the blood. He says, now, um, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? And the church says, yes. Verse 17, because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices participants in the altar? And we say, yes. What then do I imply? And now he's going to talk about, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about food offered to idols. You guys remember that? I had that big old fat ribeye on the screen behind me. On the, on the close-up camera, it looked like a, um, a smoker's lung. But for you guys, so if you're watching online, it looked really gross. It looked like just a big black organ behind me. But in reality, it was actually a, a big delicious ribeye. Okay. Anyways, it was a great week to be here. Um, now, what Paul talks about is Paul says at that point in time, is it wrong for me to eat a discounted ribeye just because it was offered to demons? No. I don't fear demons. I don't worship demons. I'm not worried about demons. But here he circles back around. He brings it back up again. Why? Because believers are actually um, engaging with meat and drink, okay, being offered to idols, but they're doing it in order to hack the spiritual technology of that meat and of that sacrifice. So you got people that are worshiping Jesus, loving Jesus, um, uh, taking communion, the, the bread and the wine, okay, and receiving the benefits thereof, but they are also at the enemy's table engaging, okay, with meat and drink offered to idols, thinking that it is going to upgrade their spiritual potential. And this is what he says. 
He says, no, verse 20, I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? And this is what he's talking about. He's saying, thou shall not compromise thy union. Paul would say, if you want to understand the dynamics of the church, you can't look to the dynamics of religion. Why? We're not in a religion. Paul would say, if you want to understand the dynamics of Christianity, you're going to have to look at the institution of marriage. You're going to have to look at the mystical union that exists between a husband and his wife in order to get a revelation between Christ and the church. In doing so, what he is saying is that when we are engaging in other spiritual forces and realities, what we are doing is we are bringing someone else into the marriage bed. And Paul says, the jealousy of God will not permit it. And this has come up. Good friend of ours, Bernice Scheidler, um, uh, 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 from, faith, from Ignite Faith Church, uh, just released. I don't know if you saw her dream this last, this last week, but the Lord spoke to her and, and began to warn her of compromise in the church. Uh, the, 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 that same night, I also had a dream, and the Lord was warning me of compromise in the church. And this is what Paul says. You can't sit at the Lord's table and the table of, of pagans. You cannot receive the body and the wine of the Lord Jesus Christ and also be engaging with, with the wine and the bread of paganism and when you begin to look at the very first sin there was a food and the enemy tried to get them to take that food and to bring it into them the lord said you can engage with the entire garden but you can't engage with this one fruit that was on the tree the snake came and said take this fruit do what with it eat it then we see Jesus comes, the true and perfect Adam. And, he, and on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, take it, eat it. Bring it into you. You see, there's a battle, you guys. That there's a battle of two kingdoms, a kingdom of darkness and a kingdom of light. And both kingdoms are trying to get us to partake and to eat, to bring that kingdom into us. And this is what Paul says. He says, can't have two kingdoms in your belly you can't have two kingdoms in your belly what does that mean it means you can't have lying and cheating and escapism and sexual sin and pride and fantasy and racism and div divisive speech you can't have this in your belly and also have the kingdom of God in your belly this is what he says you can't, you can't be engaging with witchcraft and the new age and spiritism, engaging ghosts, astrology, fortune tellers. All of this is what? All of it is communion at a pagan temple. And we've got to talk about this. Why? We're in Seattle where you do you, boo, whatever works for you. Christianity is not a you do you, boo religion. Christianity is, I'm going to take all of me and lay it down at the foot of the cross. I know that he took all of me, and therefore he is calling me into spiritual monogamy. And I don't know if you need to hear this or not, but tonight might be the night when a line gets drawn in the sand and you pick a team. Maybe you've been drinking a little bit of that and eating a little bit of this and, and just kind of checking it all out, but I'm telling you, the Lord will not have it. And Paul says here, shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we not stronger than he? Our God will not share us with the enemy. He says, I don't want for you to be unaware. All this mixture is taking place in Corinth. It's right dab, smack dab, you guys, in the center of revival. Right there in the middle of the first century revival, you've got believers that are seeing the supernatural stuff, and yet they're sitting at the table with pagans and, and trying to unlock those kind of mystical realities. 
And he says, I need to remind you of our fathers. I need to remind you of the wilderness place. I need to remind you of a generation that saw the radical provision of, of God and the radical supernatural. I need to remind you of these things. Why? This is the danger of religion that we would cloak ourselves with light in order to hide the darkness in our hearts. And we can't be such a generation. Why? Because the Lord is raising up an army of light and life. That He's raising up an army of uncompromised ones. And we've been hearing the stories. We've been seeing the things. I mean, I, I remember being with Pastor Gail in, in, in Australia and seeing a, a believer and seeing her come up to the ministry uh, to receive ministry. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, seeing her get delivered of demons. And you're like, oh, my goodness. She's like going, wow. You say, what's the deal? How did this, how did, you're a Christian. How did you, how did, how did all that get into you? How did all that hell get inside of you? You're a believer. You know, she said, she went to a fortune teller. She's a believer, but she went to a fortune teller in order to find answers. And when she did, she opened up her heart to something that wasn't holy. And this is what the enemy does. It might not be a fortune teller. It might be, it might be an old lover. I don't, know, I don't know what it is. But here's, here's what I know. The enemy comes to convince us that God is not faithful. The enemy comes to convince us, did God really, do you really think that you can trust God? Do you really think you can trust God? And here's what religion says. You do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Know just enough Christian jargon. Go to church on Sunday. Read your Bible. And when Darren says something good, just go, oh, so good, Darren. So good. Oh, so good. So good. Uh. Worship's going. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. We know how to talk. We know how to do our thing. We know how to do all this stuff. You know what Paul is saying? Hey, Corinth. Hey, Seattle. Hey, Seattle Vile Center. You got to promise me that you don't get religious. You got to promise me that you don't play some sort of role. You got to promise me that you're not going to fake it till you make it. Because that is not what this thing is about. The Bible says that a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he will never deny. God is not looking for your performance. He's looking for the real you. He's looking for the broken you. He's looking for the confused you. He's looking for the, and the enemy's coming and saying, no, God's looking for your performance and, and God's not gonna be faithful. And so, so dabble with the occult and dabble with witchcraft because, because the enemy, he'll help you. But this is what God's saying. Hey, I wanna be your shepherd. I wanna be your shepherd. And if you trust me, I'll provide for you just like I provided for the Israelites. If you'll trust me, I'll, I'll, I'll rescue you. I'll, I'll lean over. And, and it's just like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that classic picture of like, of, of like the lamb that's like, and, and Jesus is reaching down like into this thing and he's like saving this little lamb. The sad part is, is that so many times we, we little lambs, like we can do, ah, <laughs> you know, and we're like, we're in this pit and we're just, we're just lambing it up. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Ah. We're just like trying to dig our way out. And here's Jesus. He's like, I'm right here. I'll save you. I'll rescue you. But I got to be your shepherd. I got to be your only, your only shepherd. And, 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 and here's the deal is that if we're willing, he's willing. And if we will engage our soul, if we will engage our soul, engage our will, and we declare, this is what Jesus says, if we will believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, he'll be faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins to wash us radically clean, and to awaken our spirits to who we are and where we are. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God. That's why I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight to say just enough so that Holy Spirit would come and to awaken you to your identity and your destiny in Jesus Christ, that you might shed any sort of snakeskin of dead religion that would nullify the power of God within your life and that you would say 
I'm going all in. I'm not going to be inoculated with just enough Jesus to keep me from being possessed by his burning, holy, righteous spirit. Why don't you jump up to your feet? Christianity is either the most difficult, depressing thing you've ever done, or it's the most amazing, liberating journey you've ever been on. And the difference is, if you let Jesus be your Savior, or if you try to remain your own functional Savior. You just close your, your eyes and bow your heads. If you need for that heavy yoke of religion to be lifted off of you, because no matter how much you try, you feel like a failure. No matter how much you strive, you feel like you're still falling short of God's glory. If you need that tonight without anyone looking around, would you just wave, wave at me real high so I know that you're here. Awesome. God bless you. Awesome. 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 God bless you. Just wave at me so I, so I can see you. You need that, that heavy yoke of religious slavery broken off of you tonight. Awesome. 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 God bless you. Would you just pray with me real fast? Just say, Jesus, I declare you are my shepherd. You're my provider. I shall not want. You're my protector. Not my Glock 17. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. My what? You are my shepherd. I don't need no one else. I don't need anything. Lord, if I have you, you will satisfy. Pray this with me. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And if you just prayed that with your if you just prayed that with me, and if you believed it with me, I want to welcome you to the family of God tonight. I want to welcome you. You're no longer an outsider. You're an insider. You are not an imposter. You belong here. And I'm not just talking about this building. You belong here on the earth. Don't let any religion or institution or person ever make you feel like you're an outsider. No, no, no. You stink and belong here. Imposters will always make other people feel like imposters. But celebrated sons and daughters in the kingdom of God will always make the outsider feel like a celebrated son and daughter. And that is our role. It's to use our influence, right? It's to use our gifts, right? It's to use our talents, our abilities, to use everything that God has given us to awaken people to their identity and their destiny in Jesus Christ. And I want to pray tonight that the Holy Spirit would come on you afresh. I want to pray tonight that the fire of God would come on you tonight. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. And that you would drop all religious burdens and that you would find the pleasure of following Christ and releasing his kingdom onto the earth. Go and lift up your hands. Father, I pray your Holy Spirit would be coming on people all through this room right now. That your fire would come right now. That your fire would fall in this room right now in Jesus' name. That your supernatural glory would come right now in Jesus' name. That you would come upon us, Lord. That you would come into us, Lord. And that your personhood would begin to burn inside of us, Lord. Lord, I pray that your fire would burn away all the fear. Lord, all the fear of man. The fear of rejection. The fear of what people think. And we declare tonight, we will no longer fear evil because we know that you are with us. Let your fire come right now, Lord. Let your fire come right now, Lord. Let your fire come right now. Fill, 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 fill. Just take it by faith. 
Just take it by faith right now. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. The girl with the blonde hair. Yeah, I see you like a flamethrower. I just see... <laughs> I just see fresh fire coming out of you and going like long distances. I like going all the way across the room. So I just pray that, that, that I see like the cap coming out. You know what I'm saying? Like the cork is coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, there, and the kingdom of God is about to come out of you like a fire. Like, a, like just a flamethrower. So Lord, I thank you for the fire of God's love, that you're a carrier of the love of God, and I see the fire of God's love coming out of you, yet and, uh, and affecting people and even changing atmospheres. So I just say fresh fire right now in Jesus' name. Woo! Fresh fire right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ron, I bless you. You are a righteous son in whom the Father is pleased. Ron, you are a celebrated son. Father, I pray that your glorious fire would come on him right now. Jesus, I pray that you come face to face with Ron right now. I pray that the fire of your love would come out of your eyes, Jesus, and go right into Ron's eyes right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you are filling Ron's eyes tonight with the fire of God. That Ron, even when you look at people, they'll break down crying and weeping because they can feel the love of God coming out of your eyes. Lord, I thank you, Father. I thank you for a fresh encounter for Ron. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that Ron is qualified. That this brother is too legit. Too legit. Too legit. Too legit to quit. Uh, too legit. Burn, Ron. You have permission to burn, Ron. Gail, you just go, go hit him or something. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. There's somebody here, and, 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 and you are this quit. You are this close to quitting your job. You are just done with your boss because he's a bad boss. And I actually see transition coming, and you think it's for you, but I actually see the Lord's about to remove your boss from that position. I don't know. Does that make sense to anyone here? Like, you're about to leave your job. You're, you're about to quit because of just some stuff. Who is that? Don't be shy. Wave at me. Who is that? Is that you? Awesome. Hey, go ahead and raise up your hands. Go ahead and raise up your hands, buddy. I'm going to pray for you, okay? I'm going to pray for grace, for transition, that you're able to function in your sonship until this transition takes place. And Lord, I thank you. I bless this man's boss. I bless Randy's boss. And Lord, I thank you. You're not coming to punish him, but you are coming to remove him. And Lord, you're taking this guy on to his next kind of assignment. And Lord, I pray, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I give you thanks that Randy is on assignment. He's there on assignment. And we need his light there in that place. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the candlestick will not be removed from this place of employment, from this place, Lord, that that light is going to shine. And I just declare transition for this boss in Jesus' name. I, I see the Lord doing something, brother. I just bless you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's good, yeah? You'll let me know, and we'll celebrate. We'll celebrate. God loves you so much. He's got such a beautiful plan for your life. And if you need prayer for anything, we have an amazing ministry team. They'll pray for you. They'll love you. Otherwise, if you've got children downstairs, go and get them. Because they might be breaking stuff. So go and get them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Otherwise, God bless you. Have a powerful week. All right? And we'll, we'll see you soon. Take care. Good morning, SRC. This is your latest news and events happening here at church. 
Next week, Sunday, Pastor Tom Cornell and the Sozo Church team will be ministering inner healing at all three of our services, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. And we have water baptisms happening at our 6 p.m. service on Easter Sunday, so make sure to stop by the back of our sanctuary to sign up. This is Ronnie. Ronnie's found a special treasure map. <laughs> Will you help him and his friends on a special Easter quest? Come along! We've got a big community Easter outreach that's happening on Easter Saturday, April 3rd. So we need all hands on deck for volunteers. So if you can come for either setting up, dressing up in costumes, handing out prizes, we'd love to have you join us in this community outreach. Uh, so make sure you stop by, again, the back of our sanctuary to sign up. And for more information about other events and happenings at SRC, just visit our website.